Keta Benedicto, Director of BCS Cancer Commission Foundation and President of the Philippine Radiation Oncology Society. Our next session promises to unfold the vast potential and innovative breakthrough AI brings to healthcare. Beyond human limits, integrating AI into Filipino cancer care systems for better outcomes is a topic designed not just to enlighten but also to inspire uh, inspire us on how technology is reshaping the future of oncology. Our distinguished speakers will share their pioneering work and the groundbreaking advancements they've achieved in harnessing AI to enhance healthcare efficiency, improve diagnostic accuracy, and personalize treatment plans. Firstly, We'll hear from, Do from Dorothea Co, the founder and CEO of Bot MD. That's B O T M D Singapore, who will discuss redefining healthcare efficiency, how AI assistants are revolutionize revolutionizing care, one chat at a time. Her insights will offer a glimpse into the future where AI assistants streamline workflows, improve patient communication, and facilitate faster decision making. Following Dr. Box Rivera, founder of ServingQ, will present on seeing what we miss. Leveraging AI to revolutionize cervical cancer detection in the Philippines. His talk will highlight the critical role of AI in enhancing the accuracy and early detection of cervical cancer, <clears throat> a key to improve cervical uh, survival rates. Then, Dr. Michael Mejia, Chair of the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of San Tomas Hospital, will then explore how AI revolutionizes personalized radiotherapy, showcasing the, the, the precision and customized customization AI brings to cancer treatment, ensuring each patient receives the optimal therapeutic care. Lastly, Dr. Joanna Patricia Canal of the Philippine Radiation Oncology Society will discuss unleashing the power of AI for optimal nasopharyngeal cancer radiotherapy, illustrating the impact of AI in tailoring radiotherapy treatment to achieve better outcomes in nasopharyngeal cancer care. As we engage with these visionaries through a moderated panel discussion, we look forward to uncovering the potential benefits of integrating AI into Filipino cancer care ecosystem. May we now call on stage our panelists as I turn over the stage to Dr. Teres Teresa Julieta Benedicto. Doc, it's all yours. Hello. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a more unique way to present because as we know, artificial intelligence really is a mystery to some of us. And then uh, we would like an update from each of our presenters regarding their experience on how to use AI in our uh, cancer management. So each of them will be presenting at least a five minute talk of their innovations and their experience with regards to AI and we'll reserve questions at the end of their everyone's presentation so that each and everyone can have an opportunity
to have some clarifications with regards to their presentation. So we'll have the next presentation from uh, Dr. Boggs regarding uh, efforts, uh, similar efforts with using AI in cervical cancer. So, presentation please. Thank you. Can you get the slides? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, thank you for the organizers for having me around. So my topic will be on seeing what we missed, leveraging AI to revolutionize cervical cancer detection in the Philippines. So uh, as a disclaimer, I am a distributor of uh, cervical cancer AI in, in the Philippines currently. So let's go focus on cervical cancer. We all know that cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in women after breast and that it is preventable through vaccination and uh, screening. However, despite that, 12 Filipino women die of cervical cancer daily. Now, of course, much of the causes is mainly our failure to cover uh, vaccination. No? The uh, WHO goal is 90%, first dose is 23%, second dose is 5%, whereas for screening, it's somewhat very low at less than 10%. So, we are. these are the problems, you know, the lack of awareness, vaccine hesitancy, well, of course, uh, cost. And for screening, the lack of awareness, the lack of facilities, accessibility in rural communities, of course, the lack of doctors. We are, uh, you know, of course, also the nurses and the midwives, you know, and patient compliance and the cost of screening. So it's funny, you know, because we all have the approaches to cervical cancer screening currently in our country. We have HPV DNA typing, which is the best recommended form, but it, it, but there is the high cost that prevents people from getting it. Pap smear has been here for quite some long, but uh, again, um, in front the, the lack of infrastructures in rural communities, and we also have this PIA visual inspection using our naked eye. So I come to you here because we're now um, improving the visual inspection in uh, environment by putting out a colposcope. Instead of the naked eye, we now initiate uh, a colposcope, which is there, or a camera. And today, we now have this automated visual evaluation of digital images, which is simply artificial intelligence. Remember that AI, I'm oh, sorry, remember that VIA is still our primary screening test as of 2021. So this is what we do. We go to GIDA, no? geographically isolated disadvantageous area. We ask a, uh, a BHW or a midwife or a nurse to handle the colposcope. We capacitate them and they, they conduct the, uh, the VIA assisted with AI and using a colposcope. So practically how do we implement it? We go to a rural community. Uh, we provide, not really provide, but we uh, train them with the, with the colposcope. So this is practically what we do. Uh, the normal VIA process, the colposcope is there for the camera just to take a photo of the cervix, cervix alone. It's autofocus, so there's not much need of you know, fine-tuning. Once several pictures are taken, it, uh, it is uploaded into the server and a result temporary result comes out. It has the, once the images are, 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 are taken, it goes to the artificial, uh, it goes to the artificial server, and then it goes to the doctor. The doctor has the final say how to read it. So this is a doctor right there. Um, the upper left is the dashboard, logs in. Over there is the list of patients the doctor will read. This is her dashboard right here, and that uh, once you select that, it becomes bigger. Then you can, the doctor can annotate, you know, make some changes. And then you, if you want to make it zoom, uh, you can zoom it. You have even green filter. Then for the final diagnosis, they can just select either it's negative, uh, low grade dysplasia, and everything, and then send it immediately after sending it. It goes down to the clinic for the final result. You know? So if the doctor by any chance cannot, uh, cannot make the final evaluation, you can immediately refer it to the other doctors 
into Manila. Like for example, if you want to refer it to Manila for either reassessment, you know, if you want to refer it for, for either thermal ablation, colonization, or for possibly biopsy, you can actually do that. And for treatment, you know. And then immediately once an evaluation is concerned, uh, uh, evaluation is done, the, the, the lady or the patient can immediately get the result the same day. So what are the benefits that we're trying to do? One, if using a colposcope, we can capacitate the barangay health workers because we have our midwives, we have our midwives, if you go down to the geographically disadvantaged areas. No? Of course, magnification, this is VIA over here, no? and that is a uh, VIA plus a colposcope. So much clearer, so you know, it, it, accuracy is better, I, I suppose. No? Uh, for the AI, you have a reservoir of data, meaning to say, uh, you can now compare your previous you know, image mode down to today, down to your future. And then uh, AI offers objectivity. No? Hindi lang kasi VIA is subjective. Eh. Of course, as far as accuracy is concerned, there's a study ab about this machine. And I don't want to go into details of that. But the conclusion mainly is uh, sensitivity, specificity improves, is improved. No? And it, uh, it is uh, a useful tool to assist diagnostic tool for proficient and inexperienced colposcopists in cervical cancer screening. You know? uh, for the doctors, we capacitate the, M the local MHU, you know, the, sorry, MHO no? uh, by, uh, by actually connecting them with the future big hospitals. No? For, we call it cervical audits. No? Um, so every three months, uh, the, the colposcopist will read the those read evaluated by the MH also, and then later on we, we, we inform them or educate them. And then, uh, of course, by getting the immediate results, there would be better compliance, and that we empower the, 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 um, the patients to make an informed decision about their health. So this is the sample of the VIA you know, results that uh, the nurses or the midwife draws. Whereas that's our report. No, we it's say the pictures are included, so you can you can actually send it to the OB. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to take a, uh, to to call out people who would want to. Um, uh, we're, we're actually providing cervical cancer free cervical cancer screening using this technology. Beginning tomorrow, we'll be in Marikina tomorrow. Uh, we plan to come up with uh, 10,000 women screened in one year. If you have an, any organization that you, you would want us to come in, we can bring our colposcope assisted with AI for free. Just help us with the transportation and the food for my, uh, my, my women, you know. Uh, this is our schedule so far. We, I've canceled today because I was here. Tomorrow we'll be in Marikina. Pasay Momo on the 3rd. Uh, we'll be in Pampanga in the 8th. Of course, there. Los Baños, Napol, na, Napo, Napolcom, no? Noveleta, Los Baños, Cowit, Lab for All in Nueva Vizcaya, Santo Tomas, Batangas, Pateros, and Sila. So I guess that's my last slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Bob. I think your efforts for prevention and detection, early detection is, is really good as it is one of those that we like to emphasize, especially with the universal health care. 